it's absolutely not there. The William, I think I'll get to it in just a, a, a few minutes, um, the willing is then will to power and the world is will to power. It's not, we, we are sort of local concentrations of will to power, the way I read Nietzsche. Um, but maybe I should, we should get to that um, uh, positively, but, but thank you for the question because the answer is no, definitely not. I, 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 um, I, I might not have made that clear. Uh, what Nietzsche is doing, I think, ultimately, with will and so on, is although it looks a whole lot like Schopenhauer in many ways, it's actually very, very different. And I think Nietzsche saw it as that Schopenhauer was a, was a, was a world denier, a denier of life. And of course, Arthur is the great life affirmer. Nietzsche is the great uh, life affirmer in the Dionysian mode of, yes, and with all the suffering and misery and horrible stuff, how can, we, how can we affirm that? Well, it's not easy. Uh, but I think Nietzsche has a, as good a crack at it as most people. Um, maybe I'll say a bit more because I, I think I can connect up with the, the fuller answer to that question in a moment. Um, okay, so did we have that? Uh, yeah. So, um, I got into that one through the uh, Pessoa, like Nietzsche, seeing becoming as basic and seeing that as the source, in a way, of the, of the images and uh, inner friends. Okay, uh, right after the uh, talk about to live is to be other, and this, this day by day, and uh, to be new with each morning and so on. Um, that connects immediately. This is on. Um, this is section 95 um, that begins I lived inscrutable hours, a succession of disconnected moments in my nighttime walk to the lonely shore of the sea. And um, this is a. this. Uh, what he calls his eternal nocturnal walk to the seashore, for me one of the most powerful passages in Passoa and also one of the most Nietzschean passages because uh, I think we can read that very fruitfully in conjunction with Nietzsche's many musings by the sea, especially when he was living in Genoa during the uh, uh, he spent a lot of time on the rocky coast near Genoa and uh, in the Gay Science 310, uh, it's called Villa und Welle, you may know it, Will and Wave. I, I, uh, do we know if Pessoa read the Die Fröhliche Wissenschaft? Uh, uh, gay Science? In almost, uh, some, some, some lines, yeah. but not uh, all that. Yeah. Yeah. He knows the book. Yeah, you yeah. Know? because that aphorism uh, immediately yeah. I thought of, of, of these two together. Um, uh, because it's in this section here, in 95, I think, in, in, in the Book of Disquiet, um, that we find an answer, beginning to find an answer, to the question of where these inner friends come from. Um, insofar as this section, for the first time in the book, um, opens up a, an archaic dimension to Pessoa's personal multiplicity. Um, and a dimension you find all through Nietzsche's talk about um, uh, multiplicity comes from some sort of archaic inheritance. Uh, it comes from the body, and again this would be a, 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 a something that would take Nietzsche far away from Schopenhauer because for Nietzsche the body is the only thing that's worth being or studying or philosophizing with or about. Um, you get nowhere if you if you follow the, the ascetic ideal of denying the body. And this again is where he comes very close to the Asian traditions, which from Confucianism through Taoism to Buddhism in Japan, all philosophy is grounded in physical practice. It all has to do with what you do with your body. 
they would never think of, they don't even think, I mean, they argued about was which, which part of the body was in charge, and then they decided none. They, they thought the brain, the heart, the liver, and so on. They said none, because it depends when. They, they realize the body is in time, and the body at what time, at what time of day, in what season. Well then, depending on that, then different uh, parts are in charge. The regime changes with the hours and with the seasons. Um, so, uh, I'm thinking in, uh, of this passage here that when, when uh, um, he talks about the second sentence then, all the thoughts that have made men live and the, all their emotions that have died pass through my mind like a dark summary of history in my meditation when I went to the seashore. I suffered in me, with me, the aspirations of all eras, and every disquietude of every age walked with me to the whispering shore of the sea. What men wanted and didn't achieve, what they killed in order to achieve, and all that souls have secretly been, all of this filled the feeling soul with which I walked to the seashore. And that comes back several times, at least I noticed it coming back several times in Passover. Um, this is pretty comprehensive stuff here. <laughs> All, everything, the whole of history. Well, and Nietzsche talks the same way, um, uh, especially in, in Beyond Good and Evil. Um, well, how do, they, how do they know all? Well, they both read a lot of history, but no, it, it comes through the body. And Nietzsche had this, as you know, this sort of quasi Lamarckian idea that experiences from the parents and the grandparents and the ancestors um, somehow get sedimented in the body. And I gather that, that evolutionary biology and microbiology is beginning to think, wait a minute, something like that is going on at some level. Um, maybe Lamarck will make a comeback. Um, so Nietzsche doesn't tell us how, the, how that works. He wasn't a biologist, although he was very interested in biology. But let's just say that somehow it gets, does get sedimented. You know, he says you can't not have in your body the results of what your grandparents and their grandparents and their grandparents liked to do and did most often. It's, it's, it's there somehow. And he says that again and again in different ways. Um, someone in, I spent the first part of my career trying to become a psychologist. Um, and so if you look at the depth psychologies of Freud and Jung, or, uh, Freud talks similarly about the archaic inheritance. Um, they have that same idea. They also don't know how to explain it. Um, but that somehow, uh, it's very clear, it's very obvious that th th these bodies that we are aren't new. They didn't just pop out of the womb on the, uh, the day we were born. Um, they are, well, two things is what they are. One, in terms of what they are, they're stardust. Right? It's all, we're all minerals and nutrients. Nature is very interested in the mineral realm. Um, that's what we are if we make a, a just for 50 seconds, we'll make a form matter distinction. Uh, uh, the content of who we are is, is it's natural stuff. Well, and of course, now a lot of unnatural stuff that may not be doing as much good. Its form, however, is archaic. We've got the reptilian brain. That didn't go away just because we, we developed into mammals. Um, the brain stem is, 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 is the top of the spine, it's, it's, it's primitive. And if you, I mean, just look at what's going on in the world today, I mean, there's a lot of very primitive behavior taking place and people killing each other, um, not through anything that they thought about rationally, but uh, because they're bodies that are very, very old. So that's, to me, another, um, uh, another very interesting um, overlap between <coughs> Nietzsche and Pessoa. Uh, I just uh, yeah, interject, there's a, when you're talking about the bodies, uh, as is well known, Pessoa did like to, uh, 
you know, astrology was very important to him and in the creation of his, of his heteronyms. Mm. He drew up astrology charts for, for himself and, and the key heteronyms, and also for Portugal. And, and, and also did some, you know, uh, touching into spirits from the past. You know, and then he was in contact with people like Alistair Crowley for a while. And so whether he did that was really important, it was that it was a very creative process for him creating as a poet, but like William Butler Yeats did yes, the same yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, these visionary uh, writings of Manic writing in order to reawaken his poetic imagination mm -hmm. again and again. I was thinking that isn't so, when you talk about bodies, he's closer to the more almost non body like uh, apparitions. He seems to be, I find it, what I really love so is that he's, he doesn't give enough to corporeality. Well, Nietzsche goes much more and more towards corporeality of the, the bodies from the past. The soul becomes less and less corporeal. He yes. accepts in his own character. One of his, his most corporeal characters is probably Alba de Campos, who's born on the same day as Nietzsche, who begins with very corporeal poetry. Everything, looking at the rocks, looking at the water, his own torturing his own, his own body, and thinking of all the maritima and these kind of great operatic poems. But as time goes by, he gets defeated by the team of today, like Fernando Pessoa uh, or uh, like Ricardo Reich. And as time, as, as the poet develops out of the campus, you can see a development of the book, he becomes again less corporeal. Uh, I'm just thinking this, that yeah. there is a kind of diversion mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. Pessoa, looking at the past figures, but you see more spirits rather than, right. than, rather than actual corporeal figures. Well, Nietzsche is very much trying to resurrect or to restore the body as a central aspect of philosophy. Yeah, that leads me to my quite quite a primary question. The question you put at the beginning of your talk about um, how is this most explicitly arise? That you asked at the beginning. And I think that's the key question, isn't it? Is that the question for someone like Soa most explicitly arises from this very imaginary uh, this need to be created as a poet, while for Nietzsche the multiplicity is, is its philosophical agenda to bring back uh, uh, us as a collection of drives and thinking kind of what Spinoza was tapping into mm -hmm. when it's neglected in Western philosophy. So I wonder if there's a, a diversion there. Uh, and it's easier for the poet to do that because we all know the poet. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more difficult for the philosopher because he's under a lot more critical scrutiny. Right. Okay. Right. The poet creates great poetry, he's forgiven, mm -hmm. but it's more difficult for the philosopher to solve. Yes, right. That, that, that's, I sense that sometimes. Mm -hmm.